How about making a fancy motion graphic lower thirds in Camtasia 9 to brand your videos in just minutes? With the five step approach I show you and a dash of my secret sauce, you'll be able to adapt a pre-made library asset lower thirds in Camtasia 9 to be your own awesome creation in just minutes. Real quick. Before we dive in, please share how you use lower thirds in your videos and if you store any assets for reuse in your video editor. Leave a comment below and let's go. Okay, so here we are inside of Camtasia 9 and today I'm going to show you how to utilize uh, library assets, particularly the motion graphics lower thirds and how to take an existing one and modify it to make your own creation based on your own colors, brandings, etc. So first here is sliding boxes. See how the boxes slide out, nice colors, all the special effects and the text coming in and then the reversal of this stuff to slide out. And here's the nice version I created, branded based on my brand, Gord Eisman, and I've added in a nice logo thing in the front and then the reversal out. The next one here is squares and rectangles. This is the example provided in the library with the, with the uh, Camtasia TechSmith uh, scenario. And then my version after, again with my logo. See with Gord Eisman, learn, apply, transform, and then it goes out. There's really, you know, a, a five step process that I go through. The first step being that you want to analyze the asset to see what's there and what features there are and sort of you know inventory what you're looking at then once you see what's there think about how do you want to modify this you know what colors shapes motions or effects or timing or fonts you know you're starting to look at it from a perspective of what you want to modify next you want to think about any features you want to add in our case the example was I wanted to add a logo but you could consider adding other elements other shapes more text it all depends on what your need is then step four in the process is actually making the changes. And, you know, we're going to demonstrate that here. And finally, the step five is to save the asset back in the library. Now, as you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five shapes. And then at the top, we have three uh, tracks of text. So if we just mouse over, you can see all of this unfolding. Let's just make it not so blurry. All right, there we go. What I first wanted to look at was the shapes. So it shows here that there are five shapes. We only see three visible. So what I like to do is poke around and because undo is your friend, you can do this. So I'm just picking the text, separating it. I can see, okay, so there's just individual items there, but now I got text here. Uh, now we click on this rectangle. Oh, look, concealed in behind there is another rectangle and yet another rectangle. You can see in the original library asset there's the colors green, navy, red, and yellow. I wanted to map to my colors which are predominantly the white, the blue, and the black and I've added a fourth color, a char sort of like a charcoal, dark charcoal here. And I already mentioned my other um, added element is going to be my logo. Okay so step four is all about making the actual changes and right beside me here I have the finished product version. So I'm going to ungroup this uh, finished product and show you how we'll open the group and then we're going to ungroup. And now you can see in parallel there's, there's five shapes. Three of them you can't, you only see the outer one, the outer blue, and then the others are the white and the black boxes. So now what are the parallels in here? So as we've already done in the picture I showed you before, here's sort of my color mapping and we are going to map the rectangle colors. So for doing that we want to map the green to white, the navy to the blue, and then the red rectangle to like this charcoal color. Okay, so here we go. So now we're going to change the colors of all the rectangles and as you can see we have five of them here. As you know from the image we showed before that there's a three uh, rectangles layered here. So we're going to go through these one by one and they're all here. So the bottom one, the first one is red. And you see that uh, in order to change 
not just the uh, visual property for the shape but also the impact on the keyframes and of the animations we need to change uh, toggle this particular property right here so this will change the effect of the color change from not just one animation keyframe set but to all so we turn that on and as we can see this button toggles edit all animations mode on and off so we're going to turn it on now you can see the red ball at the, at the end of the beginning at the beginning and end of each of the animations so that when we change this red now which we're going to change to our charcoal so I'm going to get the color picker and come over to our charcoal color here then that's taken care of we can see that set then in the next rectangle we're still leaving that property on so all the animation uh, keyframes are affected as well now we're dealing with the green and we want to change the green color to white so we're going to white okay so all our um, colors have been changed on all the rectangles and applied everywhere and we can quickly see this by just uh, going up and show you that all the colors are there consistent with what we're trying to achieve and I'm gonna undo all of that to get everything back in alignment and now we're just gonna address changing the text Next step is now to add our logo in. Now with the logo we want it to start a little early because it's going to slide in first and it's also going to go a little longer to the end there. We're going to set the transition in now. So first we're going to use a slide right followed by a slide left at the end. Okay, so our logo slides in nicely and it also exits nicely at the end. Perfect, and we have a 10 second animation. The next step would be to put this in the library uh, as an asset. Let's do that now. So now to add this asset back into the library to have as a fresh asset that we can reuse any time, you need to go to the beginning of the asset and what we do is we're going to highlight, select the whole product, go till we see the little yellow flash to know that we've got the end. And then we're going to right mouse button, add timeline selection to library. So I don't like the cryptic name here, so we can rename this to what we want it to be and call it GI lower thirds or third version one bang so now you can see there's different categories it's sitting now in music tracks but I actually want it to be a lower third item so now we can just move that new asset we created up into the category the folder that exists for motion graphics lower thirds and you can see it's right here GI lower third and anytime you want to use it you can just drag it down onto the timeline like I'm doing here there it is. An additional important tip is how can I adjust the, t the length of this lower third? As you can see in this example, um, if I highlight the selected area, the duration is actually 10 seconds. This is, you know, possibly way too long for what I want. So, so one of the things I'd like to do is shorten the overall length of this lower third. And you can do that by doing what's called a ripple delete. So first I'm going to select about three seconds out of the 10 seconds. So you can see here I have a duration of three seconds. It's highlighted. And if I scan up, you can see it's past any of the animations. Everything's finished. And it's in an area where everything is just sitting statically. So I'm going to do right mouse button, ripple delete. And that just took out three seconds out of the 10. And we're just going to validate that now. See how the length of our clip is. And there you go. It shows you now we're down to seven seconds. Let's just see how nicely that executes. Here we go, play. Draws in very quick and then clears out.
You may desire to shorten the time of the animation even further. So right now with the ripple delete, we got it down to seven seconds. But if you want to tighten things a little more, you would want to adjust the beginning and ending anima animations. So the way to do that is to proportionally adjust the time. And we're going to use this longer duration piece here in the animation as we go through the exit. As you can see here, it starts to unwind things. So we're going to try to quicken up the speed of that. First, you would group select all of the animations by using the control key, holding the control key down and pressing the mouse button. So now they're all selected. Then I'm going to grab the beginning keyframe here of one of them. And as you can see, as I move it, they're all moving in unison. So I just moved it in a little bit. So we're seeing here under duration, it's going to point 0.19. See, it's shortened up. So let's play that and see how that looks. We're going to just give that a quick play. As you can see, that's much faster. The next step is, even though we've shortened the performance of that to execute in terms of the exit, you now want to move these animations back, slide the, meaning slide them to the left so that we can get more time off the end here. We want to ultimately, our goal, our goal is ultimately to shorten the length of time for the animation. So ultimately you want to slide them back as a group selection, but we need to be sure we have all the animations selected together. So let's see how this executes as a group now. Beautifully. So now we can see that we can shorten time off the end by trimming back all of these. Just pull back the group. And you can see we sh shaved off a bunch of time there in total. And here's how it executes. Much quicker. Wow. That was a huge Camtasia 9 productivity booster tip. If you want more cool tips on Camtasia or creating better videos from home, click on the link for my free ebook. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe icon on this page so that you can get more videos like this in the future. And thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.